Hey everybody, it's Nick. I got another tutorial for you today that is about hybrid drawings. Um, and this is a technique that um, combines multiple media and it kind of gives your drawings um, a richer feel than you traditionally get with uh, with a CAD, just like straight out of AutoCAD or straight out of Revit. Um, it harkens back to more um, conventional media that we used to use in architecture, things like watercolor washes, uh, marker, uh, you know, like... Um, pencil, charcoal, uh, like things like that, uh, like technical pen. And, uh, but we can use the powers of the computer, you know, to make, make our job a lot easier um, and uh, to um, try different things. Because when you have things in the computer, you know, they're saved, everything's on a layer. It's okay to make a change and go back or make a copy of it. You don't have to worry about making a mistake on one part of the drawing. Um, it's easy to make uh, very, very fine changes when you can, can kind of zoom in and like erase things. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to taking these media and even taking like digital media and then like working them uh, with hand media and with Photoshop and other tools. Um, we, we're, we're constantly going back and forth between tools and architecture. Um, and so this is an example of a of the uh, project that you saw, if you looked at my section and plan videos, I went ahead and just made like a like a CAD print of this drawing, and I'll just show you. So this is what I ended up doing, and I did this very quickly. I did this actually in the middle of class, uh, probably about 15, 20 minutes. Um, so you can probably do better, but this is the uh, this is the the CAD that I got. This is out of um, this is just out of Illustrator and AutoCAD, and I've got my line weights kind of set up, you know, and it's kind of it's kind of tame. Um, and we talked about how to add, you know, things in Photoshop, uh, like textures and people and stuff like that. But I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing though is adding things with hand media. And the way to do that, that I found that works really well is to take this drawing. You can either put it onto a light table and, and then actually trace it. So I, I went ahead and I could, I could get the pen lines, you know, from it. Um, you can do that, like where you just simply take technical pens. This isn't great. Um, I, I, I could have been more careful with my line work and, 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 I, and I could have managed a lot of different weights with my pens. Um, but this is just kind of an example of, of a way to kind of soften it up, make it a little bit more like humane. You get the kind of architectural kind of overlap um, uh, where, the, where the lines cross. Um, you know, you, you can kind of decide the way that you want to style it. Um, but then I went ahead, I mean, this is like the scan of it that I had. I went ahead and, and I and I imported it into uh, CAD. Um, when you've got a drawing like this, when you import it, what I like to do is just go to Levels. And uh, I lost my menu here. And uh, you could just do an eyedropper. Wherever it's supposed to be white, just go ahead and knock that out. And you can kind of keep kind of going with the white. And that gets rid of all the kind of scumbly bits you might have left with your with your hand um, or any, 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 any kind of mess you might have made. And then if you kind of tuck in you could you can adjust the black a little bit. You gotta be kind of careful with it because if you if you do, you end up with kind of really like emphasizing those other marks, and you lose some of the line weight that you that you might have had here. So um, be really careful with that. But but the white you can use the white levels to knock out you know a lot of the kind of scumbly bits. And then what I like to do is go into brightness and contrast, and you can kind of adjust the um, eh, don't do that. <laughs> go to legacy. You can adjust the contrast there. And, uh, and the brightness and that should that should further kind of knock off some of the stuff and then you can go ahead and import that in and once you put it in just I, I usually go with my layers and use like multiply style that lets all my um, just to show you that lets all my line work like pass through if I don't it's just gonna be completely on top so I, I, I use I use the multiply just to show you what that looks like and you can see, yeah, my pen drawing isn't even great. I've still got some some paper. That's kind of neat. That's kind of texture and, and um, kind of atmosphere, if you like. If you don't like it, go ahead and get the eraser tool. And go ahead and start cleaning up smudges and things if, as you like. No problem. That's the, that's the beauty of having things on the computer. And you can do things like you can take a scale figure that you made. And so, again, having a scale figure on a layer that you make allows me to put it in front of this other stuff. I took this figure. It's actually Norman Foster's. I stole it. Um, and, you know, you can use the magic um, halo here and then say invert. And then I can just copy paste it from that white background. Obviously scaling it, right? It's a giant statue now. You can transform it with command T. If you want to adjust it a little bit, no problem. So that's 
a way to get figures in. And this is the doorway, as you as you saw in the model. So having a figure kind of crossing the threshold here creates three-dimensionality by kind of breaking up that line. This person's crossing through where the light is. So, you know, I kind of, like, again, I just took it and traced it with some microns of different weights. Uh, you could do a much better job a lot more carefully, but that kind of establishes it. I cut off the bottom here. That's why you're kind of losing the ground. Um, I'm going to get it back later, so that's not that, it's not that big of a deal. But, again, a little bit different than the kind of CAD, you know, kind of stodgy CAD drawing now. Now we're, now we're kind of getting into something that looks um, a little bit looser. Uh, which we like. The other thing that I did was I went in and I and I printed out the drawing really lightly on some heavier Strathmore paper, um, which obviously you can do. Just print print the CAD drawing uh, from like a PDF. I printed it out and I made this pencil kind of tone. And you're like, oh Nick, I don't know how to get my light in this space. Well, what I, what I did was I cheated and I uh, made a rendering of it in some software and then I just used that to kind of figure out where the light would be. You could also take a photograph of your model and then kind of translate it. Um, I might get some comments about this, but I don't think the accuracy of it is, is as important as the mood, as, as the kind of atmosphere. And in this case, it's the, it's the light coming in, hitting this wall. And, uh, and it's the opening in the background that I think is I think is really key. So that's what I focused on. I did not do any line weights at all or any work because I knew I was going to come in with my with my pen drawing and layer that on top of it. And so that's what I that's what I did. Um, you, the other thing you can do with drawings, I think that really that really helps a lot is um, is uh, you can you can like strategically kind of add detail to it. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this layer here. I didn't like I wanted more contrast, so I went ahead. And I actually just drew these black boxes because I wanted to darken those areas. So I just used the used the select tool and I filled them with color. Um, and what that that does or that did is that it just simply allows me to say like you know I want I want the inside to be a little bit darker. Well, why? Because I want the poche to read better. I want the poche to be white. I want it to pop. So I did the same thing here. I made a layer called lighten. You can see my boxes here. And once I start to lay in my my background that I have, which is a watercolor wash, just simple watercolor paper. Once I start to lay these things in, you can see like how like I want to create a separation. And then I want these I want these to pop. And especially when I do is I did a ground, I did a wash for the ground. And these are all separate pieces of paper. And I just scanned them in. You can even take a photograph with your phone if if the quality is pretty good, um, and you can just lay those in. And then I did I did drop a white background, just a piece of white paper or a piece of white, uh, just white on the back, so that these things layering together kind of give me the idea. And there's a million different ways to do this. I showed you this in the example videos. Like you you can kind of determine your style, like what you want to you know what you want to show about your project. Um, I was just I just did this um just for this demo here. And uh, you know the way that you the way that you do it is totally uh, totally up to you. But the idea is that you take the digital um, files as a reference. You know they're they're the right scale. They have the precision you know that you worked on. Um, but you're going to work those drawings. You're going to use that as um, as the outlines as a scaffold to to generate something that's a lot richer. Um, that's more um, experiential, and uh, and honestly, just have fun. It's fun to it's fun to get to draw some things and get get outside the computer for a little bit. And um, it's something I think I think people really like to see. So um, that's just a really 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 quick demo on hybrid media. Um, remember to go back to the old videos on Photoshop. You know Photoshop selection. Uh, look at those um, those precedents that we had for sections and plans. Uh, there's all kinds of architectural styles and uh, you can make it your own. All right, everybody have a good day. I will see you later.